Good Monday morning, everybody. This is Grace, and I want to talk about something that um, happened this weekend. And it was one of those moments that was a teachable moment kind of thing, and it did affect me. So basically how it went, um, it's, it's basically when somebody has a strong sense of entitlement, um, they want to have things done their way, when they want to do them, how they want them done, this kind of thing. When you're basically doing them a favor, okay, and they have that whole passive aggressiveness, uh, aggressive kind of mentality and know it and um, they well let me let me get on with it okay Saturday Adam had a phone call and uh, it was from a young adult young male adult and he didn't answer the phone he, he was busy with something he didn't feel like answering it and I, knew, I don't know how that part went but I mean I heard the phone ring he just didn't answer it. later on he told me he just didn't feel like answering it and I don't know if the guy left him a message or what, but anyway. The next morning, the phone rang, and he answered it. And uh, basically, I heard Adam's uh, end of the conversation, and from here, sitting here, and he was in another room. And basically, the, the young man, uh, he's an adult. Uh, this guy, he uh, wanted to come by and pick something up. That would mean we're doing him a favor. And uh, you know, to let him come over and uh, pick it up. And... He, but he told Adam that he uh, was tired right then. It was yesterday morning, Sunday morning. He was tired right then, and he would come by sometime later on this after, you know, that afternoon, yesterday. And I'm listening to the conversation, you know, hit Adam's part of it because he's kind of repeating things, and I'm thinking, hmm, that's not good. That's not good. I wouldn't, you know, let somebody, you know, do something like that to me. And there's a reason for it. I know this person. <clears throat> So anyway, uh, you know, Adam. You know, after Adam got on the phone, I was thinking about it, and um, Adam was kind of distracted at the time because he had been working on something, and when the phone rang, and um, but I, I wasn't. I was listening. I'll be back. So, at some point when Adam got off the phone, I asked him about it, and uh, he told me that um, this young man, this adult, he was going to come over, and sometime this you know, sometime this afternoon, that was yesterday, and he and his girlfriend would come over, and to pick something up. So I, I'm listening to him and he's telling me, you know, I said, well, hold on a minute. I said, first of all, he's, you know, in my mind, I don't know if I said there, actually said this to Adam, but this is somebody who is inviting himself over. Okay. He, he and his girlfriend inviting themselves over that same day. And then, but the biggest thing to me, and I did talk to Adam about it, was that this is not making a commitment to a time. Okay. And what is that, that view is that we're just going to be here waiting around for them to come over, you know, kind of thing. And where was the respect for that we might be busy? Was there any conversation about what are you doing today? And this kind of thing. And I think Adam's, you know, he got it. He was like, because he was kind of distracted, okay, and he, he got it. It was, no, that's not good. You know, somebody is not make, setting up a time, you know, they didn't agree on this time. You need to do it at this time. You know, say five o'clock. You need to be here at five o'clock. Do it. Do pick it up. You know, have a little conversation. That stuff. But otherwise, you know, you need to ask. You need to ask ahead of time. You need to um, be concerned that somebody, you know, ask if somebody else has something that they're doing. That kind of thing. But anyway, <clears throat> so it went on from there during the day because because Adam, um, we were out and about doing things and as it was anyway. You know, after that, and you know, there were texts going back, back and forth. But the basic thing to it all was, this young man was not at all going to commit to a time. No, he wanted it for whenever he got around to it. And this is his habit. This is what he is known for, not only from us. And I know him, and I know this is what he does. But it's his habit, his way of being, that it's whenever he gets around to it. And other people are supposed to, you know, he assumes other people will just make adjustments for whenever he he needs something done. No. See, I am not willing to let somebody do that. It affected me because I live here. No, that's not going to happen. Okay. And as the day went by, like I said, there, there were texts back and forth. Not constantly, but, you know, just here and there because we were busy. And um, at one point, Adam told him, you know, no, um, we're going to be away today. You know, you'll have to, you know, later on tonight or something like that. And it's the, either side was making a commitment to, 
commit me to a time. And I was like, you need to stay a time, this time. He was saying, well, we're, we're at friends and we, we don't know when we're going to be home. No. But anyway, as it got, the day went off, you know, these texts went off and on all day long. Um, basically, the guy was trying really hard to have it his way. And that was whenever he would say, I will come back, you know, later on tonight. He's never going to say an exact time. And Adam would say, well, we're not home. You know, we don't know when we'll be home. On and on. And so the guy got even more manipulative with it. The way I saw it was that um, the guy basically said that he and his girlfriend are in the area. And they'd like to drop by, you know. And he's still not saying a time. Still not saying right then, but we're just in the area. Adam saw it one way, I saw it another way, but basically it's manipulation. You know, I'm still going to get my way whenever I want my way. I'm going to have it that time. And like I said, this guy's known for doing this. And, you know, he's just known for doing it. So, but it went on. And after a while, uh, later on at night, you know, the guy, you know, Adam just told him no. You know, finally, this guy texted and said that he needs to do it because tomorrow he's going to, you know, which is today, he's going to be leaving. Uh, in the afternoon to go out of town. See, and I saw that different than Adam did. He said basically he believes that God's going out to I don't believe it. I just think he wants his, wanted his way, so he's going to get it his way. <clears throat> but anyway, that's my dog making noise. So the, the guy never, you know, Adam texted him back say, and said, um, come by in the morning. Okay, which well, upset me because I'm the one who's going to have to be waiting around for him now, you know? <laughs> Same kind of situation. But he, um, so the guy never responded, you know, he, Adam says he thinks that he, he realized he wasn't going to get his way, so he's, you know, not, didn't respond. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that. Okay, my dog grumbling, Gus, he's, he's going to be grumbling, he's, he does that. But anyway, now, we saw it two different ways. Adam did understand what I'm saying about, you know, I was saying about people who just invite themselves over and, you know, have that sense of entitlement that you'll be there. You can, you know, spend your time waiting on them. And he did tell him you need to call first. You know, after I said that, you know, you need to call first and let us know. But no, like I told Adam, there needs to be a time. This is the time. And this guy's known that he will not, if he says he's going to do something at some time, he's not going to do it at that time. He's going to do it when he gets around to it. So I'm not going to say, you know, all the ways that different ways that we saw it after that. But yeah, you know. And it was a, a teachable moment. But here's something that came from it. At one point, um, <clears throat> later on last night, I was telling Adam, I says, you know, I kind of wonder if when we were young that age, did we do that to, you know, people, other people like my parents? Because my parents was an easy example that we would just, we lived like, it could be five hours away or whatever. And my mother was a really nervous person. So we didn't, um, sometimes we'd go there to visit, but we wouldn't tell them. Because she would be worried the whole time we were driving and it would really upset, you know, make her too nervous. <clears throat> we were worried about her health. And so we wouldn't tell them. We'd just show up. Well, they never said anything. Never, ever said anything about, you know, you should call first or anything like that. No. They, you know, and Adam said, hey, if they would have told us, we would have, you know, made sure that we called before. But they were always glad that we were there, you know, happy to see us kind of thing. They never said anything else. Still, it's one of those times you can think, or did I ever do anything like that, you know? And I think that it's really important to let, you know, the, the next generation know there are limits. You know, we are not just uh, older people. We're sitting around waiting, you know, to take care of you. <laughs> and I think that that's, that's the situation is that um, some of the younger people I know, <clears throat> they do assume that older people aren't busy. I don't understand that, you know, why they would assume we're not busy. You know, we're, we're waiting for them. Anyway, what is your opinion on this? How would you see it? Um, leave a comment in the um, below this video, and I'll talk to you all later.